going to be Amisha Patel, who for the last four years has been the executive director of the Grassroots Collaborative, a coalition here that includes organizations representing 100,000 Illinoisans. And I, I, I love VJ like everybody else, but I have to say, VJ, in terms of thinking about a coalition like that, there's at least more than 1% of people that are socially aware that are represented. <laughs> She has been involved, along with others, in a range of movements that have been very important for a number of years here around economic justice, responsible budget organizing, the Campaign for an Equitable Olympics, the Big Box Living Wage Campaign, and New Chicago 2011, a very important progressive to radical intervention in relation to the mayoral election earlier this year. Um, she will be speaking about the ways in which Occupy corresponds to and works off of this years-long, decades-long, in some cases, struggle for economic justice in Chicago. Amisha. So many friends here. <laughs> How y'all doing? Um, so, yeah, I, what I want to talk about is um, a few things. I feel like I should have three parts. <laughs> but I don't, so I'll make them up along the way in one. <laughs> so I would say um, a couple of different things. I think that this moment that Occupy has sort of opened up here um, is interesting for, for a, a few different reasons. So one is I think it does, and it, some of this echoes for sure the three speakers before me, um, but it does really open up the space for real dialogue, and a space that hasn't clearly existed for some time in this country. Um, and, and I think it, the space is really key for vibrant organizing, right? That there's lots of places that those of us who've been doing grassroots organizing have, have taken up space and have been trying to, you know, have been grappling with issues on the ground in communities. But Occupy has certainly opened up a public space that hasn't existed before in terms of real dialogue around what the issues are, what the root causes are of the things that are going on. And I think that, in particular, having this in a mainstream conversation is really interesting, and it does, um, with all of it, it does open up lots of things, right, in terms of uh, what the issues really are, um, what the um, struggles are within the conversation. And I would say that, you know, one of the things that have come up, I, you know, a lot of my news I get now through Facebook, right? So I get all these articles and a lot of things that I've seen in terms of how people are talking about Occupy. Um, there's a lot of, you know, clearly a lot of critique around the Occupy movement. Um, and they're important, right? So questions around white privilege, around heterosexism, around transphobia, um, around relationships with police, tactics, demands. And there's been a vigorous debate and conversation around all of this that needs to happen. Um, and, you know, I think that the developing the consciousness, you know, I, can't, I can only speak of sort of my sense of things here in Chicago. Um, and from what I've heard from folks who've been involved in different levels with Occupy Chicago through what I've seen directly, um, in Chicago, a lot of the movement in Occupy um, has been, I mean, what it's done for us here has been really brilliant for groups who've been organizing around issues of um, connected to economics, race, poverty. Um, it's been really critical to getting our message out in such a bigger way. But I also think that there's um, a critique here around, um, and there are people who are struggling with how to make sure that any efforts that are led primarily by um, white middle class um, folks involved in the movement, like there are real critiques there and there's real work to be done in terms of expanded consciousness. Um, what I'm interested in is, is, is how we expand consciousness and continue to expand the consciousness of organized communities of color. And actually I'm trying to relearn even that phrase. So what, instead of saying communities of color, people of color, actually what I really prefer is people of the global majority. Because right? that's actually who we are, right? We're people of the global majority. It's a very different context in how we actually name and claim space. So if I ever say communities of color, you just sort of, hey, PGM. Um, but I think that, uh, but, I mean, I think that's the place of where the work is that we've struggled with, right? Is how do we actually continue to grow and expand and learn from, um, from people of the global majority that we work with and organize? Um, how do we make sure that, uh, you know, that, that we really can, and how do we use this, the leverage that exists in this moment, right, to push forward the issues that people have been organizing around for, for decades, um, more than decades, right, but sort of my analysis of what I've seen is in the last few decades. Um, and how do we really make sure that the agendas of working class people and people of the global majority are at the forefront? 
the collaborative has really done a lot of this work this last year has been really exciting for us. We um, actually with as soon as Mayor Daly announced that he wasn't running for re-election, we really took the space of like this this idea of imagine this moment of imagination, right, and expanded imagination. Like, what could Chicago look like without Daly? Is really this exciting moment, and we actually took took advantage of this this brief moment that existed a possibility around um, a city that is not run by. Uh, oh, um, yeah, thank you. So, uh, <laughs> and in that moment, what we really did was we, we, we figured out how to, that there was a lot of, and there's a, you know, a huge hunger for how do we actually imagine what the city looks like? How do we do this and take our issues at the forefront? How do we define what the city should be? Um, we organized uh, 25 organizations, brought 2,600 people together um, around the New Chicago <coughs> mayoral candidate forum that um, all the major uh, candidates attended, except, of course, our current mayor, um, Emmanuel, whose public engagement was um, meeting people at L stops, right, shaking hands at, um, at the red line and the blue line. Um, and, but what it actually really made clear was that there, the people are hungry for, for real connection, for actually putting forth a vision of what it is that um, our communities want to see, what our communities need, right? To not just survive, but to really thrive and to be cent center, at the center of the city. Um, not at the margins, but actually at the center. And um, this, that work really, that sort of moment really sparked the work that the, the, the Grassroots Collaborative did this last year when after the mayor was elected and um, the city council changed in some, some ways, we did a power analysis of kind of like examining, all right, so what does the situation actually look like in the city now? And our realization was actually pretty clear that, that Mayor Emanuel wasn't our target, that the corporate agenda behind the mayor was our target, and that unless we actually took on the corporate agenda in Chicago, we, weren't, we were going to kind of be in our issue silo, we're going to be talking about the things that are really key and really important and tangible, yet never really changing the narrative of what's actually wrong, what's going on, and where the power really lies in the city. So we, be, we began a campaign to take on the corporate agenda in Chicago, and we did this by talking about subsidies, and how subsidies in Chicago are spent, and where it gets spent, and who gets that money, and who doesn't get the money. And um, it's been the fight that we've organized around for this last year, with a lot of uh, friends in this room, so um, lots of friends who are part of this, part of this effort. What was, really, um, what was really obvious was that, uh, you know, that we really, there is this opportunity here to, to move forward stuff, um, and to move forward an agenda of what, not just of what we were against, but what we were for. And with Occupy um, blooming, it was really amazing in terms of what that did for our local organizing and the work that we've been doing in communities of color, people of the global majority, working families, what they've really led for, for decades without, with minimal attention, with being pushed to the side. Suddenly, suddenly there was a, there's a platform for that work, right, that we've been doing forever. Um, we got named as Occupy Chicago for everything we did, and we were, we're okay with that, right? Because we don't care what you call us as long as you, you, as long as you cover what it is that we're talking about. Um, and in our, you know, in through our organizing around subsidies, what became really obvious was it was a way for us to, again, to take on what, what the mayor was doing and what his corporate friends were doing in the city and continue to do without change with what, when it was daily or what it was Emmanuel. It's the same issues and the same struggle. The fact that tax increment financing, TIF dollars, are spent, a vast majority of that money is spent downtown, um, though that money was meant for, not for blighted communities, right? So when you look at a map of where the money gets spent, and what that means is that um, downtown areas, wealthier neighbor, neighborhoods, have literally tens of millions of extra dollar every year to spend on fixing streets, on, on potholes, on the, you know, all the stuff that, um, that they have that money to spend on, whereas communities of color, communities of the people of the global majority um, <laughs> really don't, you know, on top of having the issues be magnified um, hugely on top of it, don't have access to this whole other layer, this whole other system of racial inequity. Nobody talks about TIFs as a system of racial inequity, but it's very clear that that's what it is, right? It allows the money to be, cons our tax dollars, instead of going to schools, parks, libraries, mental health clinics, um, instead of our money going to those places, instead what it does is, is it goes to the, into the hands of downtown developers, into the corporate elite, into the poor babies of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange that, um, you know, are crying, you know, are struggling to pay their tax bills despite, despite making a billion dollars in profit last year, or $430 million the first quarter of this year. Um, 
this is what we're up against, right? And this is when we knew that we can't just sort of talk up, we can't talk about housing or foreclosure or schools or any of this stuff without naming the corporate agenda that we're up against. 